Welcome back to reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. I'm Elliot, and if this is your first time here, the idea is pretty simple. I want to read more books, and I'm using genres as the way to direct myself towards books that I might not pick up otherwise. This time, we are going into a category we've never been to before non fiction. And the subgenre is writer's biography and the book representing that is Franz Kafka by Max Brod. Before we get started with the contents of the book let's talk about biographies. What are they? I feel like we know what biographies are. They're quite popular. I could break biographies down into two types. Ones that follow a person from birth to death and ones that follow just a specific event in the person's life. Either way a biography is all about learning more about this real life person, what kind of world they lived in, and what were their influences. Actually, I wanted to learn more about the author of this book, Max Brode. Max Brode is one of Kafka's oldest friends and ended up being the executor of his estate when Kafka died. That meant Max Brode was put in charge of all of Kafka's unpublished work. He ends up publishing all of Kafka's work posthumously. Did he do that as, you know, a selfish act for his own fame and he exploited his friend and betrayed him? Or did he do it because he was really one of the only person that always believed in his friend Franz, believed in his writing? Even when Franz Kafka, this nervous, self-conscious person, never believed in himself, I wanted to find out what their relationship actually was like. This book has two styles. It relies on Max Brode's memories and experiences with his friend and also Franz Kafka's personal letters. Together it paints a more complete picture of his life. Max Brode shows us the environment that he's living in and the letters allow us to slip inside of Kafka's brain. For example, in the letters we see how shy, reserved, and self-conscious Kafka was. He would write these letters explaining why he wouldn't show up to an event because he didn't want his presence there to ruin that experience for Max. Even if Franz agrees to show up somewhere with Max, in the letters he would explain how he doesn't want to be a bother. So we learn about the relationship between these two men. In life, Max was the more successful writer, constantly pushing Franz to publish his work, but Franz never had an interest in publicity or the fame of writing. Reading a biography of a writer is so helpful if you're interested in the writer's works because it gives you the full picture of what their influences were. If you didn't know about Franz Kafka's father, you wouldn't be sure where the authoritative themes in his story originated from. Kafka did not have a good relationship with his father, Herman who was a big, aggressive guy, and Franz Kafka was small and timid, especially as a child. At one point, Kafka wrote a 100-page letter to his father explaining to him how he felt about his kind of intimidation. However, that letter was intercepted by Franz Kafka's mother, who told him to, yeah, you shouldn't hand this over to your father, nothing good will come out of it, and he agreed meekly. And so what he wanted to express to his father, he never got to do. Perhaps it's because of his father, but Franz insisted on keeping breadwinning and art separate. This meant he got a job at the Insurance Institute and had to scrape together time to do his writing. This meant he had different sleeping patterns and eventually trouble sleeping, which meant he was generally exhausted at work. Friends, like many of us, felt like we've sacrificed precious hours and instead of dedicating it to our art, we end up wasting it in an unfulfilling job. Art wasn't the complete meaning for Franz's life, but it was something that he was always desperate to do, something he had little time for. And it was something that made him feel inferior, but 
so much of his life hinged on it. Franz had these incredibly high standards that he just couldn't live up to, but I also love the parallels because he had this diary that was filled with descriptions of just normal, indifferent people, like people waiting for the bus, and it's so beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. One thing great about reading a writer's biography is learning about their influences and inspirations, and Franz Kafka had his. Goethe and Dickens, they would talk about how he would copy their work. In fact, Kafka would say something very cynically and that he blames Goethe for actually slowing down creativity and the German language because so many people had tried to replicate him. I'm halfway through the book right now and I'm hoping that the question that I had, which was what was Franz and Max's relationship like at the very end? What made Max defy Franz's order and go against his will and publish all his work posthumously? I hope that gets answered at the very end and I'll find out and I'll let you know right now. Okay, I am back and I just finished reading Franz Kafka by Max Brode and here is how I feel about the second half. The second half deals a lot with Kafka's feelings towards marriage, having children, finding his own place to live, having a fulfilling career, and most importantly, dealing with his illness. An interesting thing about Franz Kafka was that he had really high regards for marriage and children. And even though he had a troubling childhood himself, he thought that people who pursued a family and pursued it well were to be admired. But he also understood that for many people, it was just events that happened to them. Kafka had always wanted a home of his own. He wanted to have a wife. He wanted to have children. But the thought of paying for a property, the thought of spending his time with his family, would ultimately interfere with his literary career. It was after Franz Kafka's death that Max discovered that his friend might have had a son, a boy who died when he was seven, the mother being a close friend who ended up detaching herself from Franz after the situation happened and the relationship kind of soured and Franz Kafka never knew about this. So this makes me wonder, what would have happened if the relationship worked out? What would happen if Franz was actually a father to this boy? How would it have changed his life, especially in the final days? How would it prevent him from feeling so heartbroken with Melina. The last part of the book deals with the correspondence between Max and Melina, an unhappily married woman that Kafka had a relationship with, that Kafka was trying to fight for, trying to free her from her terrible marriage and build a life with. This was all happening while Kafka was getting more and more sick. However, Franz Kafka might have been better off not being a father because one of the most tragic things is how he was described as someone who didn't really understand how the world works. He was like a child who was obsessed with trains but had no idea how a train actually functions. He was really bad with money and he's often miscounting it and is giving back money when he shouldn't have. When I started reading this book, I wanted to understand Max Broad as much as I wanted to understand Kafka and I felt that Max was someone who really admired Kafka's work, often found his own interpretation in his friend's work, and often found themes about religion, philosophy, and just hopefulness in Kafka's writing. One thing that I found really interesting was the similarities between Kafka and the Book of Job, where Kafka's characters and Job are victims that are being arbitrarily punished by a greater force. Job is being punished by God, and Kafka's characters are being punished by some sort of mechanism. Before I started this book, I had a picture of Kafka in my head. He was this sad, lonely writer, and while that was sometimes true, he had a lot of deep relationships. He had a lot of relationships with people that paralleled characters in his stories, so it wasn't the relationships that were the downfall of his career. His greatest barrier for success was his illness, which he ended up calling his punishment for being so indecisive with his art 
and with his pursuit for love. Kafka died failing to marry the woman he loved, failing to gain any literary success, and failing to gain his father's approval. Yet, he spent his last days with some close friends, Dora, Robert, and up to the very end, he wanted to live, and he wanted to be cheerful. Kafka fought for his art, he fought to work, and he fought for love until the disease truly took him. Kafka is often painted as this oppressed, depressed character, but Kafka was actually a very hopeful person. I spent a lot of time with Kafka's writing earlier this year, reading The Metamorphosis to a level where I haven't really done for any other writer, so I went into this bio hoping to find some humanity to the person behind those words, and I felt I got that out of this bio. It wasn't the most fun read. There was this strange one page that was missing near the end that was quite fitting of a Kafka bio, to be honest. This is Franz Kafka, a biography by Max Brode. I'm Elliot, and I'm reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. If that interests you, check out this playlist right here. And for more videos about writing and the creative process, don't forget to subscribe.